Hi there, this is uh, Eugene Blanchard of TelecomWorld101.com and today we're going to talk about VoIP and QoS. So, voice over IP and quality of service. Um, this is a copyrighted video. It means uh, you have permission to view it, to display it, um, to link it to this YouTube uh, site, but you're not allowed to copy it, modify it, or claim it as your own because that's just wrong. Okay, so voice over IP and quality of service. So the problem we have is that voice communication is real-time traffic. Voice traffic cannot be delayed. Uh, we have a, a limit, it's called the round-trip time uh, or delay limit, a maximum of 300 milliseconds. What we find is that if you have a voice conversation and there's a delay going to the uh, destination and back of over 300 milliseconds, we start to lose our, our um, uh, the rules of talking is that we're not sure, is that pause, am I okay to talk then or not, right? Uh, you might have heard this when you have a long distance phone call and there's quite a delay and you go to talk, the other one speaks at the same time. So we can't delay it. Uh, what happens with delayed packets is that we drop them. Uh, if a packet comes in late, like packets don't have to come in order, uh, we could have it coming in late. And, and an example, it's not a real example, but let's say we're, we're speaking and all of a sudden the word the is dropped, it's delayed. And all of a sudden it appears two seconds later. Well, we don't want that word the to randomly appear in a sentence. So in voice traffic, we uh, drop the uh, delayed packets. Same thing happens with lost packets. If uh, uh, It happens quite often on the internet as a packet will get clobbered and disappear. Uh, we don't re-request them, right? Uh, the lost packets are dropped for the same reason as that um, what would happen is that it would sort of lose part of the intelligence, right? So when uh, voice packets are dropped, intelligence is lost in the conversation. Uh, one solution that is done is that we only transmit 20 milliseconds of audio at a time. Uh, so that way we lose 20 milliseconds, that's uh, uh, two one hundredths of a second. Uh, we, might hear, we might hear nothing or maybe a little glitch or something like that, but it would be perfectly acceptable. So one solution for drop packets and lost packets and delayed packets is uh, we only lose 20 milliseconds at a time. Now something that happens is that on a network uh, we're fighting for bandwidth. We have a, a competition between voice and data. They fight for the same network bandwidth. And the problem is during large data transfers, voice packets are lost, delayed, and we drop packets. And voice quality suffers. Uh, if we don't have uh, a solution for this, what we end up with is really bad quality and people complain. So the solution uh, first solution we can try is separate physical networks. We have one physical network for voice and one for data. This is just not practical and it's a waste of resources. Why are we duplicating everything? Uh, convergence is a solution. It shares the same network infrastructure. And how we do this is that we use the same switches, the same cabling, the same uh, network infrastructure, routers, but we divide the network virtually and we use VLAN, so virtual LANs. Uh, we have one VLAN for voice and another VLAN for data. I kind of like this picture here of an Ethernet switch and what we we do virtually is we divide it inside electronically and we say these ports are used for voice, these ports are used for VLAN. So it's the same as if we had two networks but we separate it virtually. Uh, problem area is where voice and data share the same physical connection. So even if we VLAN the network, we still have certain areas where voice and data are going to uh, share the same link. So as an example, our wide area network link going out to the internet, we're going to share our uh, uh, the same physical connection. Uh, some people I've seen, they'll actually have two internet connections, one for data and one for their uh, voice. Uh, another one is trunks. Trunks are uh, connections between, in this case it shows a router and a switch, so we have a uh, and that connection there we will have bandwidth contention, fancy name for it, uh, and where data and voice are going to share the same connection. Uh, trunk um, could be between switches, you're using a dot one q trunk which is a, a trunking protocol and we're going to share it so that's another area between switches. Uh, multi VLAN ports, uh, this one shows a multi VLAN port on an IP phone. IP phone actually has uh, built in an ethernet switch and it's a three port switch. One switch goes one port goes to the Ethernet switch, and it's a multi VLAN port, and the other port is internal. It goes to the IP phone, and then you have an external port that goes to the PC. 
So the PC would be on the data VLAN, the IP phone would be on the voice VLAN, the connection to the Ethernet switch would be a multi VLAN port that would actually carry uh, both uh, traffic point of contention. So one of the things we can do is we can apply a quality of service. So quality of service to the rescue and it gives priority to voice traffic over data traffic. Uh, there's two network layer uh, quality of service schemes that work with IP so it's a network layer uh, quality of service schemes. First one is TOS or, or TOS and the other one is DiffServe. Uh, type of service or TOS, TOS in the IP header, it has a TOS field, and three bits are assigned in that field for priority. So with three bits, you can have a priority from zero to seven. Zero is the default priority and the lowest priority, and that's the one that data usually runs on. Seven is the highest priority, and it's used for network critical um, information and messaging and that. Uh, what we do is we set voice, we set to a priority of five. This means that voice will have priority over any data on a link where um, we have both voice and data traffic running. Uh, you set TOS in the voice over IP devices configuration file. Um, usually on a TFTP server, uh, this shows an IP phone. An IP phone will download its configuration from a TFTP server and there's usually a few files. One will be a global file that will be for that model and make of that phone and sometimes you can set it in there. Most of the time you will. Uh, it'll have a, a field that says uh, voice TOS or voice priority and you set it for, uh, for five for uh, for voice and then you have a data priority and you'll set it for zero. Uh, or it might have a, 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 a it might have a, a unique configuration file uh, when you have a global file for the make and model of the phone and then you have one that's very specific to that phone and it'll uh, be identified by a MAC address and it will have um, the extension number and the caller ID and the secret and things like that in, in there um, or at the device you can go through the uh, uh, configuration setting menu and set it there. Uh, diff serve is an improved type of service uh, scheme. It's, it's kind of TOS on steroids. It shares the IP header TOS now it's slash DSCP field. A DSCP stands for Differentiated Services Code Point which nobody likes to say because it's a whole mouthful and it's abbreviated DiffServe. And uh, so one of the things I want to make uh, clear here is that you only use TOS or DiffServe. You don't use both. Right? So what you'll do is you'll set up your, your priority using one or the other. Uh, now DiffServe uses six bits. It uses a three bits from TOS plus another three bits in the field and it allows it to have a priority from 0 to 63. 0 is the default, the lowest priority. That's what data would be. 63 is the highest priority. That would be for uh, network critical um, in information that's being passed. Uh, and voice we typically set to 46. So it's about the same thing, about two-thirds of uh, the prior priority rating, whatever it is set to to 46. And the same thing is that you'd go into your uh, uh, um, device's configuration file and, and set it uh, to priority. It could be through something like Endpoint Manager or something like this that would allow you to configure multiple uh, devices at the same time. Now what's interesting is that you can give VLANs priority also. So switches are layer 2 devices. They work with the Ethernet frame. Uh, and what you can do is you can give VLANs priority. Now when you use .1Q, .1Q is a short for IEEE 802.1Q protocol trunks. And these are trunks that I mentioned before uh, between switches. If you're having switches in a hierarchical network and you want to have uh, share uh, transport VLAN information across them, you'd set up a .1Q trunk. And uh, or if you're going to a, uh, the router on a stick, that's a router that has subinterfaces that's talking on uh, to a dot one Q trunk. Uh, then what you can do is actually set priority on the VLANs. And what happens is that there's a field. Uh, a dot one Q trunk. What it does is it modifies the Ethernet frame and adds a field called the uh, 802.1p field. And one of the um, 
uh, options in there is called classification of services. They use three bits of that field to give a priority for the VLAN of 0 to 7. 0 is a, a default priority that would be for, da for data and uh, uh, 7 would be a high priority for network critical uh, communications and we would set it for 5. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than this and it actually leads to MPLS which is multi-protocol label switching which is a whole topic in itself and that but we can actually do that at this level. Right? Uh, QS, when we apply QS, voice will not break up during large data transfers. It'll have priority over it. We can, now, something important was we can control everything within our LAN, but not the WAN traffic. Right? So the WAN is a problem. We can control outgoing WAN traffic because we're the king of our network, and we can determine exactly what has priority leaving our LAN. But on incoming traffic, what we need is if we want to have some sort of control over it, we need a QoS agreement with our service provider for incoming voice traffic. So they're going to tag it somehow to indicate that, you know, this is voice traffic or, or whatever, right? So we find out that WAN is, a, is the one problem. Um, we can control outgoing WAN traffic, but incoming can be an issue. Um, routers, uh, some routers allow priorities to be set uh, based on the physical LAN ports for traffic going to the WAN. So you can say, uh, here's a physical port 1, this one has a, uh, a cable plugged in it, a little blue cable, and we can say that anything coming in this port, this is from our voice uh, VLAN, is that it will have priority over the other ports. Uh, some firmware you can download to upgrade uh, um, your Wi-Fi router. It could be DDWRT, uh, some, some pronounce as DDWRT, or Tomato Firmware. Uh, a lot of the new routers are incorporating this also. It's kind of a neat feature. Application layer gateways, uh, that's uh, basically a higher level firewall that can uh, be part of your uh, Wi-Fi router. Uh, it examines the contents of traffic and you can assign priority to voice protocols. So what you can say is that anything leaving my network like SIP or RTP, RCTP, uh, IAX, H323 and Skinny Protocol, uh, what they can do is they can have priority leaving my network. So that was voice over IP and, and quality of service. Uh, I'm Eugene Blanchard um, of telecomworld101.com. If you want more information on this, you can go to telecomworld101.com. We've got uh, lots of tutorials on that. Thank you very much.